I'm Hannah Phillips. I'm studying chemistry at University College, Oxford, and I'm in my fourth year. I'm going to talk to you about Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything. This book starts from when the universe was created and goes on to talk about the different people that have shaped science. At school, when we were applying to university, we were giving a reading list and it just so happened that this book was sitting on my shelf at home and my dad had actually been trying to get me to read this book for a while. So with my, um, a bit of prodding from my teachers, I, I sat down and read this huge volume. A story that stuck in my mind, and one that I also wrote about in my personal statement, was about Thomas Midgley, who is known as one of the baddies of chemistry. Thomas Midgley invented CFCs, which, as you may know, deplete the ozone layer, and he put lead into petrol to avoid the knocking effect of a car's engine. Initially, this seemed like a really good idea, but it turned out that lead is very toxic and poisoned quite a lot of people. Thomas Midgley came to a pretty gruesome end. Crippled with polio, he managed to invent a series of pulleys that would get him up and about when he was in bed. Unfortunately, he managed to get entangled in this and that's how he strangled to death. He has been described as one of the worst inventors in science. It was just used as an idea to form a question. And so this led for a question about the shapes of different molecules. Then we had harder questions to come. We had lots of maths questions that I had to work out on the spot. When I found out they got to Oxford, I was obviously very excited. When we were thinking about going to university, we were given a reading list. The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins, Chemistry World, which is a journal, New Scientist, which is a science magazine. I've been reading a lot of journals, finding out about new papers that have been published. The chemistry journals have different impact factors. One of the ones that people try to get published in is called Angavanta. Nature is another big journal. Articles that are published in Nature often also get published in the media, such as the BBC. Lectures, about two or three lectures a week. Practical labs, two or three tutorials a week. And for each of these things, you'll have work to do. The tutorial system is what makes Oxford so great. You get to interact with the professor. Some of them will always get us on the whiteboard and we won't be able to escape because everyone has to take it in turns. And others are more willing to just let us sit back and answer a question if we want to. Reading has been quite important during this degree, but the great thing about chemistry is that you can mix it up and if you're bored of reading, you can do some maths or you can do some organic chemistry which has more mechanism. The wider reading has kind of come into it by just having a bit of a background and finding it really useful to know where the chemistry that we're learning then fits into useful science. This year I've been doing a master's project and I've been in the lab every day. Definitely got excited going in some days knowing that I'm about to do chemistry that no one's ever done before. Working towards making a possible cancer drug. I've realised that as much as I've enjoyed being in the lab, I really want to work with people and actively help people. I was working in a pharmacy and I thought that doing chemistry would then lead me to do pharmaceutical research. Instead of being behind the counter, I'd be actually making the drugs and doing the research. And that's what kind of got me interested in chemistry. I wouldn't be shutting any doors, I'd be, if anything, opening them. Mm -hmm.